considering that we've been talking about Kudasevsky and, and Brian, you made the point that you want to see Oliver skip. This is a, a chance for all of you to uh, participate in... <laughs> Make the case. All right. One question. Super simple. Who is Tottenham's most exciting young player? And oh. this is a, the rule are here. There's four, four names that I put out there. All, they've all got to be below 23 years old. Is it Ryan Sessegnon, who's 21? Is it Kulisevsky, who's 21? Is it Oliver Skip, who's 21? Or is it Christian Romero, who's 23? Those are the four players. You can all make your own case for whoever you fancy. I'm guessing no one's going to say Ryan Sessegnon, but if someone wants to be creative, find a re find a oh, rationale. Oh, no, he's very creative. Okay. Oh, and if you want to go to someone else, anyone else who's under the age of 20, 24, so 23 or lower, who's the most exciting young player at Tottenham and who you have the highest hopes for mm -hmm. in their career? And we'll start with... Uh, I haven't got the spinning wheel thing today, so we'll go with... Let's, go, let's start with Will. Let's go with Will first. You, you throwing in Romero there made 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 the conversation a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, young players are kind of thinking U23, so that would exclude 23-year-olds. <laughs> he, he, he could still play in the 23s, couldn't he? Or could he? Yeah, he can, yeah. Well, anybody can play in the U23. I think there's a certain limit of, like, uh, what's his name? Play with the U23s, didn't he? Uh, Danny, Danny Rose. Rose. Um, but uh, for me, it would be a toss-up. Between can't, can't be a toss up. Can't uh, be a toss up. This right. is the game. Then it's gotta be Romero. Then um, if you're gonna make me choose one, it's it's gotta be Romero. Uh, I think I think he's got the qualities to be a very um, Vertonghen-esque type player on the opposite side, though. Um, but I mean that same style. Somebody who could push forward, uh, play balls in really aggressive come out sweep collect things pick things up play all over the pitch yeah and um <laughs> he doesn't he? He, fancies, he fancies himself a strike makes or, runs into the box it, all yeah, kinds yeah. of stuff. yeah i mean <laughs> but that's because he's got the talent right when you have the confidence to do that uh, in yourself that you're able to get forward and get back um if we're talking about who has the highest ceiling um for me it's Romero. all right adam should I even bother if I if I agree? <laughs> no, how do you do what you want? Yeah, take it where you want. It's fine. Yeah, I think I think Romero. I think I think that by the time all of their careers are finished, I think like you have to be incredibly bloody impressive to be a a centre back and to be kind of a, a showstopper. And you know, he he literally he gets all over the pitch. He's mm -hmm. he's he's getting. He's getting up into the 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 opposition third, and 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 I I I can't see it being too long before he's scoring goals as well. And to say that of a centre back, and and you know he is bullying people like he literally is the Hulk. He's bullying people in our third. Yeah. And I just think he is the most exciting prospect by far. He he will leave the biggest impact I think you know when his when his career is said and done. We'll, we'll remember some. I'd say that there's some show stopping moments in his future. Uh, you don't, you don't think he's him. a little bit clumsy sometimes? Yeah, again, I mean, he's young. Again, that's again. why I think that's his age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his age. Yeah, he will only improve. And and uh, I mean, clums the clumsiness has to be comes part and parcel with being uh, aggressive. And he is super super aggressive. With the the only thing we'll have to worry about with him is red cards, which I'm sure are coming, and it, it probably <laughs> won't be all that long either. But yeah, well, this, this is what I'm I'm worried about. I think I think you're going to see. As he gets on, I think two maybe two red cards a season. I feel like he's just until he until he can cut like tune that side of him out. He goes. You just east. wait. We'll see that. We'll see it at, at Old Trafford now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just because no, we said it. Like, I don't he, think had to, been... he had to get taken off against Everton. That challenge that he put on onto yeah. uh, whoever it was, so he could have got sent off for that alone. Let alone and then five seconds, and then yeah. yeah, that's it. And then like three minutes later, he pulled the shirt back on uh, Gordon. Like he needs, like that could have been it. Like he would have been out for the Man United game. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the yeah. guy. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love him. He's got that little twinkle in his eye where he wants to absolutely fucking hurt somebody. I but, love that. But when, you know, when, you, when, you, when you've named, you know, Kulu and Sessegnon who are, who are scoring goals and Kulu looks like he's going to be, you know, a, a, an incredible uh, attacking player, it's hard to not to be impressed by someone who is who stands out that bit more and he's a, he's, he's a defender. Do you know what I mean? He really is a... He's a character. He's a presence. He's got incredible skill. His ceiling is going to be so high, and I think he's going to leave the biggest impression by the time his career is done. 
All right, so it, it, it seems like in, in the chat as well, everybody, like Mick, Scott M, Stinky, everybody, Ellie, Ellie's even in love with the way he looks, not just the way he plays. Everybody, <laughs> Alpha Spurs, everybody's saying that the Romero is the answer. Maybe it's a tough, maybe I've made it a little bit too. Uh, I think the... if, if you if you said under 21, okay, right, yes, yeah, so oh, under, under 23, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so no, let, let Brian answer first and I'll answer. I'll do an answer then. Okay, but if, if yeah, to answer, if you want to answer Romero, you can and say why. But also, if you fancy uh, removing Romero and then giving a case for the other yeah, three, I, I'm, I'm I think, gonna do I that. think Skippy makes I think there's a case for Skippy I, as well. I, I'm gonna do that, right? But I'll let Brian go first because I think I think it's it's a given that Romero's his key out of all the young players we have, he is by far the best out of the lot and he's yeah. also got the most potential, right? Okay, just yeah, because yeah. the level he's showing right now. Okay. Um, of course, he's got like Adam kind of just said there that he's got those those young mistakes in him, which is like the clumsiness and maybe the over getting overheated too rash. much. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. the rash rashness. Yeah, and and I think I think in time he will learn because I mean, look, even even Dai was doing that last season, and and that Dai was what twenty seven last season, now twenty eight now, and only mm. now he's showing maturity. So it can take a long time for players. Obviously, our die is different because this is only the second season playing as a centre back. But Romero, I think, will get there a lot quicker. So, give it another couple of years, two years, and I think you'll see, you'll see maybe those more signs of that world class defender potential that he's got, and maybe starting to come through more. But I'll okay. give my answer if I'm not including him after Brian goes. Yeah, so so I'm hoping Danny wasn't going to choose the same. We'll say the same as me. Now I've said this on uh, every single stream. Every single stream I go on. And I'll continue to say it because when you say youngster, I I talk. I don't even talk first team. Oh, I know who's going to say. And, and if he was first team, I'd probably put him in. This is Alfie Divine. Yes, oh, yeah, Alfie. Okay. I I have been waxing lyrical about Alfie Divine from the very very second we signed yeah, him. The you reason have, you have you have been the saying re it the I'm reason gonna... I've been waxing lyrical and I've told this story before and I don't know if anyone on this channel that are in the chat that haven't heard it. Some of my parents' best friends, their son was on the Wigan medical team at Wigan Athletic. And I spoke to him after we signed him, and literally they said, this guy, he is off the charts. His fitness levels and everything that he does is like a twenty, like a in their prime, world-class 28-year-old athlete. Uh, Liverpool always talk about, and everyone, wherever team, talk about James Milner and how his health and how his fitness is consistently like way above everyone else. Well, Alfie Devine is doing that now. Alfie Devine, I mean, you just got to look at his goal against Arsenal in the under-23s. He's already captain for that at the age of, I think, 17 or 18 now. This kid, and I keep saying it, isn't going to be a superstar. He is going to be a world superstar. That's how I can't big wait to see him play. I, I am g him up. This kid, once he finally... Finally gets his opportunity, and I hope he gets it. I hope we don't was do he another... on, Was he on the bench against Everton? He, I don't know if he was on the bench at Everton. No, he's been on Everton. the bench. He was on he the bench against Leeds. Was. He was on the bench against Borough. He was on the bench. I can't... But this kid, like yeah. uh, like um, Conte has been saying, he's not giving people a... They're, they're earning their place in there. Now, obviously, with Harry Winks, I was saying I'd rather Benson Cor or, or sorry, Hoybier and Divine than Hoybier and Winks. Uh, sorry, yeah, because Alfie Devine, I, 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 I'm going on the record all the time. I can say this kid, when he finally comes through, is going to be a breath of fresh air. He will be in the England team. This is how big I'm going within moments. He yeah. is that damn good that I am so excited. I mean, people saw me like an Alfie uh, <laughs> Gala, <laughs> like that same Gala to um, Michael Owen and his career trajectory. I can't say that word online. Career. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Um, but Alfie Devine, by far, is the most exciting thing I've seen at Tottenham. And I can't even think how long. This is, I mean, I'm more excited for him than I was Harry Kane. Taking midfield. I'm more excited for him than any player that has come through. I'm more excited for him than when we've signed some of these elite players or bigger players. I cannot wait for Alfie Devine to get into this squad, get onto that pitch and show <laughs> you know, about to speak. <laughs> excuse me, and show everyone the capabilities of this kid. He is going to be absolutely phenomenal. 
So I hope Danny wasn't going to say him because I had to get all that no, in first. I actually, I actually wasn't. I didn't think of him, but he is a great, another great option we have. And I think, I think he can. I, I, when I've seen him for under more so than more so than Oliver Skip though, more so than yeah, he's a different time. player, he's a different player. But I think he's got. I think he's probably got more. But why potential. hasn't? But why hasn't he made it yet? Why has, if, if if he's seventeen? Uh, seventeen. Oh, was he? Oh, okay. Oh, fair he's seventeen. 17. He's got to build his physique up. But, but he's he to... he played. He has played at under twenty three level for Spurs, and he's made. He's made some teams. He's played in the level. first team for Spurs. He played yeah, like, no, during the, 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 the FA uh, Europa League. He played against Marine. He, Cup. he scored that brilliant scored. goal against Mork. It was uh, not Morkham. Um, who is it? Marine. Um, Marine. Marine. Yeah, Marine. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you watch him, he's got a brilliant goal a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think I don't know if it was other twenty ones. I think it was maybe. Um, Why isn't he on yeah. loan then at the moment? But they don't want to send him on loan. Be 18, uh, no, is it, is it is it eighteen? Is that right? Is it? You've got oh, to you got to be eighteen to before a yeah. player can go out on loan. So that oh, may have been why Scarlett hasn't gone out on loan just yet. Although he's just hit eighteen, so it, he can. But Alfie Devine can't go on a loan. But but I'll let Danny carry on. But this guy, oh, honestly, by the way, I just didn't say um um it's Mbappe scored a goal for Paris Saint Germain, so it's two 0 on aggregate now against Real Madrid. But um yeah, no, I think I think he's he's another great shout. Um, I, I'm like you, Brian. I can't wait to see him play. From what yeah. I have seen of him, he's so exciting. He, he's he. What I like about him is he has no fear. He hasn't got any fear. Um, he doesn't care who he's playing against. But I, I can't wait till he starts getting into the first team on a more regular basis. But out, out of those players you mentioned, Sean, yeah. Um, I, look, I, I would like to say skip right, but I'm I'm I'm. At the moment, I'm reserving my judgment on Skip, and I know I know I think he's going to be a very good player. I know Conte has said as well he could be one of the best midfielders in the game, and he said that recently, like about a week or so ago, didn't he? Um, he really he, he believes Skip's got that level to, to be one of the best around. Um, yeah, and I think he is right, and he and he can. I think he can. I think be, Skip. I think Skip could be right? an absolute. Right. I, I, to me, more. to me, right. I don't think he's going to be at the same level, but I think he's got that ability to be our, our kind of Kante, our own version of Kante. I think that's that's where I think he can get to. Maybe Big not shoes. to, maybe not to that level of how like the, the the elite level, like the best in the world in his position. But I think he could get to. I think he he's got the ability to get to somewhere in someone who could be in the top five or ten centre defensive midfielders on on the planet. And I, I really I think he's got more than what say. Scott Parker had at his his age. I think he's got more. He's more intelligent than say Sir Scott Parker was. Even Scott Parker was a good player for us. Wasn't yeah. like an amazing player. There'll be arguments people might say with Scott Parker versus Hoybier. That people will have their debates about that. I'm not going to start that one off. But um, I think Skip is one of those players. But I honestly believe if for me, I'm I'm going to go for this player. Now I, I've always, I, I've got my arguments for Sessegnon as well, and I've I've always said that. If Sessegnon stays, if Sessegnon stays fit, I still believe he's going to be a better left wing back than than um, Regulon, right? Um, but I actually think Kulusevski, right? From what I've seen of him so far, I love the guy, right? And the reason why is because at such a young age to come into the Premier League. Now I know he's built yeah. for it, but Hit the, the ground way he, amazing, yeah, the way he plays football, right? He is. He's so mature for someone his age, and he's let he he's he's years above. He's playing football years above the yeah. level of his actual age of show his actual age, right? And for me, what I love more than anything is his intelligence, man. I haven't seen a player with intelligence like him since Harry Kane. I think. Let's see if I can right. get his uh, stats up on the game. But what what I just I just think what I like about him is that he's showing this level right now. Now I know it's only a couple of games since he started, right? since he's been playing in the team. But on the trajectory he's going, if he keeps playing at this level and get, getting slowly better and better and better every every game, right? This guy, I think, could be one of the best in his positions. Now, he'll be a different player to like a Rafinha, right? He's not going to be one of the players who is, who's going to tear wingers apart, like tear defenders apart. But he will use his intelligence with his passing. Yeah, ability yeah. We don't need his... every single person in the in the in the offensive line to do the same thing. Sonny can do it. One, we've no, got a exactly. Mora, we've got a Bergwijn. Dejan does something different, doesn't he? Yeah. Now, if we were to get another, if we change ever change a formation, right, and we get another like a, a fast winger in, I think this guy could play behind a striker. I think that's where he's maybe the longevity of his career might end up as he gets like more into his peak years. I think he might start sitting behind or playing as a central attacking midfielder. Because I think that's where he can really impact teams a lot more. 
Yeah. But I think right now we're using him as a right winger because he's the best option we have, right? We don't have anyone else who can really play right wing. Lucas Moore is not really a right winger. He's shit as a right winger. I don't care what anyone says. He is shit as a right winger, right? Bergvine yeah, Lucas is an attacking midfielder, to be honest. Yeah, Lucas is more of an attacking midfielder. But I think I think we're going to see him go. I think he's going to be one who's going to go in the summer. I, I, I don't want him to go because I think he's, he's a decent squad player. But if it means making room for another winger, uh, someone better, then I would be all for it. Um, but I, I just think I like the way Kulisevsky has started. I like what he shows. And what I've, I mean, yeah, what, I, what I've seen from him um, gives me a lot of confidence that under Conte, if it is Conte or under another manager, if it's not Conte, who's going who's gonna to really focus on coaching the players. I think this guy has got so much potential. He yeah, can same. be an absolute world-class player. And I, I, I didn't think he could be. I didn't think he was as good as I thought he was after seeing him for Juve. But now coming to see him play in the Premier League and seeing when I was he's at ready, that game, he's he was. For it, isn't he? He, yeah, he was. But he, there were certain moments where he was tearing past players. But what I like about him right now, he might not be the fastest, but what I've noticed about him is his is his acceleration from a standstill point. Right when he's standing against an opponent, he's faster not, than he, he's faster so, than people give him right, credit. Right. So no. For, so no. What it yeah. is is right. He hasn't got a good top speed. So if he's running, he's not, with the he's ball, not slow. No, but listen, listen. No, no. If he's running with the ball down the down the wing, right, a faster player will get. A lot of players will catch up with him, right? Yeah. Because over distance, he hasn't got that top speed to keep that consistency of speed over a long distance. In short bursts, when he's standing up against an opponent, his acceleration is phenomenal. Like yeah. he he will beat a player like they're not even there. And I've seen it time and time again. He will stand there up against an opponent, and he's like, "See you later, mate," and he's gone. Mm -hmm. But that's because in short spaces, in short short periods, short bursts, his acceleration is brilliant. He's very quick, and that's where it defi that's where it confuses people when people say, "Oh, some people will say he actually is quick." Some people say, "No, he's not quick. He's just not quick." over a long distance. He's not going to do what Sun can do where he can run yeah. halfway down the pitch and bur burn past players. He's a yeah. player in a short, in, in, a, in a small vicinity, a small area where if he's standing up against someone, he can, he can easily just burst past them. Right. Yeah. But over distance, he can't, but that, that, that's all you need when you're in and around the, the 20 yard area. Right. And you, I, you've seen it in the penalty box where he'll just stand still, and then all of a sudden he's just knocked the ball a little bit, and he's gone past someone. And you're like, yeah. he's gone, and he's been like, like, for, for me, like I, I agree. Well, I, I, I mean, you're giving you're giving him the plaudits, but you didn't give him the, the the name. Like for me, of the of the three, even with Romero, as much as I love Romero, I think he's got for me. He's my answer because for all the reasons you just said, I think he's uh, your your camera's gone into fuzzy yeah. mode. Yeah, I'll get so annoying. It's so um, annoying when it does it. I'm trying to focus for, it again. For all the reasons you just said, I, I think he's got a vision. He's got, and for me, it's the 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 fact that he looks up the second he gets the ball or he's receiving the ball. Even sometimes before he's received it, he looks up and he seems to be able to like observe and absorb oh, it's brilliant. whatever's going on in the game. And he has like an it's like a temperament where he's equally he's not selfish like some no. players are where they where they just want to go and him. shoot. But he's not afraid to have a crack. Against Everton, when he put Ever when he put Sonny through, um, it was one of those goals where he could have kept the ball and popped it through anyway and, and took him a taking the shot with his left foot, and I would have had no problem with him doing it. I would have had absolutely no problem with him doing it because it was he was just as it was just as viable an option. But he decided to not to put them through the one twos he does with Doherty. I think he's someone who's got confidence to be able to. He, but he picks whatever's the best thing for the team, but that, whether that, that means it's him doing, taking the shot or laying it off to somebody else. That's that's because of the high football IQ and intelligence. That's what I mean. Has, and to right? me, and to me, having that IQ even at, tw oh, at twenty one, yeah, I think 100%. that's more valuable because I I think that Romero's a very talented <laughs> centre back, and this is in no way di digging out Romero. I think he's great, and I think he's a super. Like, I love him to pieces, but I don't think he has the same intelligence as. Kulisevsky, sure. and so I, I, I personally I'm gonna would take Kulisevsky as my option on those options. I would have picked the last. I'm gonna tell you something, right? Sorry, yeah. The last time I saw a player come to Tottenham, right, with a high, high football intelligence, right, someone who who you can see he 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 understands the game, he anticipates it, he's one step ahead of everyone else, right? Marvish. He's not selfish. The last person I saw was Raphael van der Vaart. Yep. He was the last player I saw at Tottenham, barring Harry Kane, right, that was of that kind of elite intelligence level, right? Yeah. 
and that that that's why I've got a that's why I believe Kulusevski could become a player who is going to be such a key player for us, and he's going to surprise right. everyone more than anyone yeah, else I think would have so thought well. on the Tottenham team. The, 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 sorry, the other first of all, Stinky's right actually, Ericsson as well, Danny. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, Ericsson as well. So, Rafa, but Ericsson, but still years and years the difference of time, Ericsson, though, me. the difference of Ericsson, Ericsson had a lot lapsed during certain times. He never had the constant, he has the intelligence, right? But his concentration at times was not always there, right? I know, I know, same, I know every player goes for it, but Ericsson, we don't we have to remember Ericsson did go through every season long patches where he was shit, yep. right? Yep. And every single time he was doing that, we played shit and we couldn't win games, right? And when he started turning up, then we started turning up. Right, and it's the same thing. As soon as we have a creative player that doesn't do that, we just crumble. We just can never break down teams. It's all even when people forget. Even with Ericsson, it happened for years. Every single time he went through these patches, we were shocking. We uh, we just couldn't turn around, win uh, draws into wins. Right, boys, now, boys yeah. if you don't if you don't mind, I know it's a passionate thing. Uh, Brian, do you want to make? Because I've got, I've got so many more questions to get one through. We're thing. already two, two hours. Two more in. things. They're each going to take ten seconds. Ellie, yeah. just to let you know, darling. Modric came after Van der Vaart, so Van der Vaart was yeah. after. So that's why Danny would have said Van der Vaart. Um, but the other thing I just forgot to mention with Alfie Divine as well. What well, you got to remember as well, he's already the England under nineteen captain at seventeen. That's yeah, the that's face the country of well. him. It's not just he. He that I mean. You, I mean, it means that we should have seen. So we we, should, we should have seen him in the Leeds game, mate. This is one of the things that annoyed me about last night, uh, uh, on Monday night. Like you're four 0 up against Leeds, and you bring on Bergwijn and yeah. the, the, no, the usual right. crew on, on Monday night. I understand that we took um, Romero off to protect him from getting sent off, so you bring on um, you bring on Sanchez. I understand that Sessegnon gets, gets injured, so you bring on. Regulon, but there was a third option, and I'll ask. I'll go to Will first because Will hasn't said, and then Adam as well. So you guys haven't said much for a while. But like, it, it was there was there an opportunity, guys? Like then, when you got two subs, and you make the third sub. Like, did Bergwijn need to come on when you're five nil up, four nil up? Was that the right time to bring on? Yeah. I know Alfie Devine wasn't on the, the the team list, but Harvey White was. Thanks, God. Yeah, but you still got to I still I, like you've got to save one of those attacking players for Manchester United. I mean, if they'd all played ninety minutes, I know we've still like. But you, you could have you could have taken off Saturday's a long time, but but you could have taken off Sonny because Sonny was exhausted. You could have taken off Sonny, put on Harvey White, and gone to a three-five-two just to give him a chance. I think though that you, when you have other players um, in your first team who aren't going to get a lot of minutes, especially now that we're not in any cup matches um, for their fitness levels. Uh, you have to bring them in um, yeah. over over the youth. Um, yeah, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So, so when if not if not then then do you, do you, do you guys ever see Harvey White, Alfie Devine? Thanks, not this season. Do you, do you see them season. getting any time this season? Not not at all. Not the rest of this season. No. no. When we when we start when we, in the preseason, yes, only, and when we start playing only games, only if we get injuries and we have to use them. It's the only time mm. we're going to see them. The, the, see, the thing you got to look at this as well is whilst we're still. Plausibly within a chance of Europe of, of all the three cups, bringing on those first teamers, we we need goal difference. We need to. I mean, the five nil yeah, was that's a, a great, good point as well. That's was a, a point. great yeah. way to get the goal difference. Now, I'm not saying Alfie Devine or Dave Scarlett doesn't come on and get a goal, but you know, Bergvine in recent form has been more clinical in front of goal, has been offering a lot more. So you need we need that goal difference to jump up big time and win like four nil against Leeds. 5 0 against uh Everton certainly helped build that, but we have got a lot of goals we need to make up on. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've done so, that though. Nine, nine goals, nine goals scored, zero conceded last two games, right? Last two league games. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good. Catch we need more. Technology. Exactly. Know, we do, yeah. <laughs> we do, we do need we do. more. I think that's why those players didn't come on. I agree with what there's definitely something in the water. Me and Will are on fire today. Um, uh, there's, I, I, I think, <laughs> um, Next season, oh, so we're eight. We're eight now, and Arsenal was twelve. So yeah, we need to be about fifteen to be honest. If we want to feel comfortable, yeah, yeah. I, I think preseason is going to be huge for for Harvey White. Could have been going out on loan to earn some minutes and get some minutes, but obviously because of the January outgoings, Conte said no, we can't afford to let him go. Alfie Divine, I think once he hits eighteen, will go. Out. I don't know if he'll go out on a loan or straight in. Um, Dave Scarlett needs a loan. We need to give these guys minutes. And then get them back in. So it's very the, these three are definitely uh, to coin a phrase used by the one for the future or three for the future, shall we say? Um, 
But yeah, I think that's why they haven't come on. Uh, but I agree at some point, you look at Gareth Bell when he was losing 24 games, Harry read that, fought him on 3 0, and then we know what happened after that. Um, but I just don't think this will be the season they do it. All right. All right. Great, great analysis, guys.